Hey, I'm Christian. Uh, I'm a solutions architect at AWS working in Switzerland. Um, and I would like to speak today about uh, platform teams and uh, center of cloud excellence. So we call them also CCOEs. And uh, the reason for it is I see many of our customers that have either already created a CCOE or in the process of doing it. But at the same time, um, I work prior to AWS for a big insurance company and had there also the pleasure to uh, yeah, set up a platform engineering team. And I think there are uh, significant overlaps between the two uh, organizational setups, but also certainly some differences. And therefore, this talk is uh, today all about uh, yeah, how to compare them and uh, what might be the right approach for you. So what is ahead of us in the next 15 minutes? Um, so first, let's speak, why do we have those two terms today? And what is the reasons um, for, for being or for having them? Then let's speak about really the overlaps, but also about, hey, what are the differences between them? Um, next, there are certainly specific pitfalls, what we will uh, take a closer look. And also I will present to you some good practices, how to mitigate them. And we will close um, by yeah, how you could really get start and, and make this happen. Good. So let's take a look on why do we speak about them? And there are certainly um, two, two, I would say, two categories um, that are driving it. On one side, there are specific business drivers, what you might also have here from your business counterparts, from your management. So we need to become faster. We need to take a closer look on data. Machine learning could be a topic. So there's a lot of things ongoing. And this is also true if you take a look on the technology um, evolution. So if you take a look at what has happened in the last decades, there's a lot of things uh, which have not only popped up, but are really now um, yeah, more or less the de facto standard. And um, yeah, to also name, for example, cloud, certainly this is something what AWS has, has brought up in a 26 um, first time. But if you take a look, for example, how the situation is in Switzerland, so we came up with our AWS region last year. And this gives certainly nowadays customers and teams um, absolutely new possibilities. And at the end of the day, well, I already mentioned the new possibilities is one side, but on the other side also is, is a significant complexity that can come up with all those new possibilities. And this is exactly where both the platform teams, also the center of cloud excellence, um, come into the game. So on one side, their goal is to provide a safe access and a safe and an easy access to those new capabilities and to really enable other teams. Typically, those could be domain-specific teams, and last but not least, also to influence, let's say, this organization. So if it's uh, a company or an enterprise with long history, there might be specific approaches how to deliver software to production that might not be, let's say, in line with today's best practices. And uh, such a central team could help here also to break up the old, the old patterns. And on the other side also is about um, how to deal with complexity, right? So. Uh, how you could reduce risks on one side and um, because um, yeah with um, great power comes also great responsibility this is certainly something what plays on uh, here uh, a role so how could you make sure the teams have the proper guardrails in which they are able to run and in which they are able to operate and last but not least also with technologies like cloud it's, it's very easy to create your own shadow IT right you mostly need a credit card and then you can already get started but there's not really a reason for doing it if you're properly integrated in such a central team so let's take a look how um, the both terms platform engineering teams also the ccoes overlap and the basic idea is really to provide reusable capabilities to their teams to focus on the hard parts typically those are security compliance aspects um, disaster recovery topics to name a few um, it's also key how you stuff those teams. So not only having the developers or the operations guys, but really have a cross-functional setup is key that this team is really um, yeah, enabled enough on its own to, to push um, forward those topics. And to make sure that you can scale also in, in mid and big size organizations, you follow a self-service approach so that teams could consume um, yeah, your services. And at the end of the day, uh, automation is key. So if you don't automate it, you will not be able to, to really be fast enough and um, also adapt your platform uh, over the time. On the other side, there are also differences certainly between the two, right? On one side, it is about, hey, where are you running your, your, your technical capabilities on? It could be for a platform team, it could be on-prem, it could be in the cloud, 
or for CCO, it certainly in the cloud. Um, then on the other side, also the mission might differ. So, uh, and I mean with this, so what is the goal of the team? Um, it could be for CCOE, a broader view regarding cloud. It could be also regarding uh, other directly built SaaS solutions, while this is typically not the case for platform engineering team. And if you build your technical capabilities, integration effort might significantly be different between the two, because if you pick and choose different technologies and uh, yeah, try to integrate them on your own, don't underestimate the effort for doing it. While on the other side, if you could, let's say, rely already on managed services by a cloud service provider, this will reduce also your effort significantly, which also leads to the result that the CCOEs can be typically a bit smaller stuffed than if you're having a platform engineering team, which is um, more, um, let's say, on a, on a, on a build, build it on your own or uh, integrate it on your own approach. So let's take a closer look on the typical pitfalls, what, what I saw uh, that teams follow one or the other approach. So we will speak about people, technology and processes. Let's go one by one. First, uh, if you take a look on people, so it's not only about the technical parts, so how the team is operating, but also who are your stakeholders? So who is your sponsor? Who are the other um, teams that are using their platform? And Having here really a clear and proper stakeholder management in place is key for you for having a, a long-term success. And how you could do it, right? It's having having or making sure that you have a con continuous investment uh, in this uh, newly created team is very important. So that also managers understand, hey, it's not a one-time uh, project or activity, and then it's over. So we have close to budget, and then we are done. And for doing this. It's also key to speak about the value of what your team is able to provide to the organization. So um, try to think about how you could express this added value to, to make it really tangible also for the management. The other aspect is I'm quite certain you will think about how your platform could scale and there are different possibilities that exist. But on the other side, it's not only about the technical aspects that needs to, to be scalable, but also your organization, so your team. How do you scale? So you will have a limited set of um, uh, people in your team. And therefore, I think thinking about involving partners um, that you could scale if you have workload peaks is quite important. About also, hey, are there other people in the organization where you could think about um, how you could involve those people and also thinking about really what kind of skills are in your team. So also to think about a proper T-shaping that they are not only expert in one specific area, but also are able to cover to a specific degree other aspects. And uh, well, also here a point that I would like to highlight is um, while you will have certainly a dedicated team, um, don't fall into the old style of working in silos. Think about how you could um, collaborate with others. Think about also of potential job rotations that people of your team will work for several months, several months in a specific business team or vice versa. So this will also make the platform not only, let's say, your own small baby, but also really something that the whole organization will be later um, proud of. And um, this will also give you a lot of feedback possibilities. So to learn from the teams, what, what are their challenges, also get insights from outside, um, what is what is further needed? Then let's uh, take a look on the next part, which is technology related. So um, it's, from my point of view, impossible to say, okay, this is exactly how our architecture will look like. Um, and it will be set in stone. And then for the next 10 years, you don't need to adapt it. This is certainly not will happen. So um, the same approach is also be sure that you have different modules for your different capabilities that you can change independently of each other. Um, and what I can give you here as a guidance is really think about what are your design principles. So what matters for you, how you build the platform. So think a bit less about what you will exactly build, but think a bit more how you would like to do it, what principles play a role for you here. And think about also the dependencies between your model modules. So what dependencies uh, are they? Um, yeah, makes them transparent for the rest of the organization and uh, ensure also that you can really release new um, capabilities for specific modules independently of each other. Um, then something that I had also to learn on my own is really, hey, it's not only about having specific stages or um, environments for your business teams, but also for you, your own, your own team, to make sure that they are able to 
develop and test new features. And we can think about like, hey, there might be a mainland where your business development teams are working on, um, and you'll have also your own lab or island, which is dedicated for you. And therefore, it's also important to think really, what does it mean to be productive or what does it mean to have a production stage? So typically what I learned is the first stage which is already used by developers is from, from a point of view of a CCOE, our platform team already production because if this environment has problems or is not running your company will lose a significant amount of money because teams are not able to develop their solutions and also here from a technical point of view i think it's really important to um, put enough um, effort and attention on monitoring so not only making sure that your capabilities work as expected but also to see from the monitoring what kind of features are really used and which will not, because this helps you to later also set the right priorities. Last but not least, the third pillar is about processes. So um, here it is key also to think about the, the operating model. So you're not in a central team and then say, okay, to your teams, this is something what you have to do. So there's no push. Instead, follow a pull-based approach. You have to be with your capabilities good enough that te people and teams want to have your um, um, services and capabilities. Um, I spoke about, regarding already about the prod, what does it mean for you? So um, this is something what we, what we already saw. Then also think about, hey, how can I avoid to become an organizational bottleneck? And um, there might be a discussion also happening, hey, you're not only the owner of the platform, but also let's say um, you are responsible for doing the, the, the business workloads or the integration on it. And this is something what I not recommend to you. Instead, think about, hey, what are the roles? What are the responsibilities of those teams? And enable really the business um, teams and the uh, um, domain-specific teams instead of doing the work for them. Um, what I found also out was that there might be a lot of lacking requirements. So, for example, for how long we need to keep the logs um, I have nobody found in my organization prior who said, hey, it needs to be that long. And how fast specific aspects needs to be implemented or what are, let's say, the non-functional requirements. Um, instead, define it on your own. If you didn't um, were successful in partnering with security compliance or governance teams, define those things and say, hey, this is how we interpret it. Is it good enough for you or not? And also clearly, um, this is for me also very important, even if you create a new cloud or, or a platform, hey, this might not be able to, to cover all the aspects. Instead, I encourage teams to think really about a different platforms and you will already have some of those platforms. Think about how they differ uh, regarding um, price, regarding agility, regarding security, and try to compare them with each other if you have specific workloads. And even in your platform, um, you might have different needs for, let's say, specific um, storage tiers. Um, there is no one size fits all, and therefore it's important to provide also the flexibility to your teams. Good. So with, with knowing all this, so what are you doing or what you can do with it? And I think um, the first very important part is having a clear vision what you would like to achieve. Uh, and I like the quote of Steve Jobs. So he said, if you're working on something very exciting, um, what, what really appeals to you, you don't need to be pushed. The vision will pull you. Um, it's also key to really invest in your team. Your team is at least um, as valuable as the assets, the technical assets, what you created. So make sure that you build, that you invest in the capabilities and the skills of your team, because this will allow you to have a long-term success. Um, having partners on your side will be key because there's a new of um, there will be a lot of new territory and those partners will be able to, to help you. We have at AWS a very broad partner network. We have professional services, people who could help you here. Um, and as a fourth part, which is also important, is team up early with your internal customers. So um, learn from their needs because this will also influence what are the central capabilities of your platform. And at the end of the day, think about, hey, how you measure your progress of building your new platform. And uh, yeah, if you're familiar with the Agile Manifesto, you have the, the 12 principles and working software really matters. So don't make the mistake and do a design for, for, for six months and say, okay, let's try it out. No, instead we try to build something, get early feedback and yeah, integrate also here feedback loop to understand what worked well, what worked not well, 
this will help you to become very successful. So I hope those points provide you a lot of insights that will help you on your journey. And I'm keen uh, to also understand from you your thoughts around it. So I'm happy to get your feedback. So send me an email. You find me on LinkedIn. And yeah, uh, then I'm interested what you uh, think about it. I wish you a great uh, platform con 23 and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.